you ever push through that midday energy suck 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. right after lunch where all that happens is you get home at 7 p.m. and you find yourself crashing on the couch? In today's video, we're gonna talk about the perfect nap and how you can make sure to get it. If you stay to the end, I'm actually gonna give you my favorite way to make sure that you can have the perfect nap every single day. So a lot of us find ourselves in these repetitive cycles where we push through our midday grogginess and we end up falling asleep earlier. We wake up earlier and we keep this repetitive cycle going. But that's not what we need. Instead, what we need is the perfect midday nap to reset our circadian rhythm, to make sure our energy is good and our productivity is set. And this is the video for that. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you can get notifications when new content just like this comes out. In our culture, sometimes it seems heroic, courageous, or manly to actually get less sleep, to say, oh, I did all this on this amount of sleep every single night. But in reality, getting this little recuperative nap is gonna be one of the best ways for you to get more sleep, improve the detoxification of your brain, and really help with energy and productivity overall. Tip number one to keep in mind before you go and take your midday nap is to keep it short. Keep it between 10 minutes and 45 minutes. When you push over that, I know we talked about in the video before, you can actually increase your ability to have a positive mood and have energy in that aspect. But what happens is you have sleep inertia and sleep inertia makes it so you feel groggy when you wake up because you were, you were stepping into REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep its territory already. So by keeping your nap between 10 minutes and 45 minutes, they've seen the best results with improving alertness, improving focus and productivity, and seeing those benefits lasting over two and a half hours after the nap. In a study called The Effects of Napping on Cognitive Functioning, they actually showed that the benefits of a five to 15 minute nap are almost immediately after the nap, although they only last between one and three hours. Well, a longer nap, 30 minutes and up, so between that 30 minute and 45 minute period, can produce impairment once waking. So you can have that sleep inertia. You may feel groggy when you wake up, but almost immediately after that goes away and dissipates, you'll see benefits for a lot longer. So that is tip number one. Make sure to keep your nap short, 10 minutes to 45 minutes, and you will feel great when you wake up and be able to really take on the day. Number two is to make sure that your conditions are dark and cool. At night, this is the same thing. We wanna sleep in the dark. We wanna make sure that it's cool and that our bodies can relax in this temperature that it's used to around 62 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit at night is the best temperature for people to sleep in. Now, the same goes for naps. If you really wanna get into a nap and you wanna get into it quick, it really pays off to make sure that you can jump directly into the nap. By keeping your room dark and cool, you can make sure that this happens easy. Your body gets right back into sleep mode and it goes right to sleep. Even something simple like putting a t-shirt over your eyes and taking off your socks, your socks being taken off for the coolness, t-shirt over your eyes for the light, can be a great way to make sure that you can fall asleep quick using the conditions of dark and cool. Stay consistent, that's tip number three, because if you're napping every single day, make sure to nap at the same time. My good friend Trent McCloskey of TrentMcCloskey.com actually practices the sleep siesta schedule. So what he's doing is he's practicing a polyphasic sleep cycle where at night he gets six hours of sleep and then in the middle of the day he gets a 90 minute nap. That 90 minute nap is the extra sleep cycle that he didn't get that night before. Every single day at the same time he goes to bed and he makes sure that he gets that nap time at the same time every single day. Your brain gets programmed to these repetitive tasks, these repetitive habits. Using time management as a high leverage skill, you're able to make sure that every day at that time you hit that same nap, that 10 minute, 30 minute, 45 minute nap, whatever it is, you can fall right into it and you can make sure to get the most benefits out of that nap that you ever could. Number four is to make it quiet but make it comfortable. We talked about dark and cool, but quiet is a whole nother beast. See, when a room's too quiet, people can't sleep right. When a room's too loud or there's weird loud noises going on, people also can't sleep right. I like to use a white noise generator because it provides a great amount of noise to allow me to easily fall asleep. My brain gets tuned in to every time I hear that noise, I can fall asleep easier. And the bonus, the thing that I'm gonna give you at the end of this episode, is actually my favorite way to make sure that I can fall asleep instantly and stay in that good nap for 30 to 40 45 minutes. There's a whole nother angle of looking at it though because if you're not comfortable during your nap, you're gonna wake up with these sudden thrusts and you're not gonna know why. I know that when me and Trent started practicing siesta sleep schedule at the beginning, I don't do it as often anymore, 
but it was one of the hardest things to fall asleep for the full 90 minutes without being jolted awake by fear. And that leads into tip number five, which is make sure that you calm down before you jump into your nap for the day. Just like with sleep, if you jump into sleep at night after working out, after doing some type of stressful activity, after your adrenals are up, your cortisol is going, and everything is in the opposite direction of sleep, one, you won't be able to get good sleep, but two, you won't be able to fall asleep for a while. This is why people deal with racing mind. This is why people deal with really bad sleep qualities because they don't allow themselves to calm down and really get in a good state of mind. Some of the easiest ways to make sure that you can get the perfect nap and to get that calm down, comfortable feeling is to take a cold shower. It's to meditate right before you go to nap. It's to eat before you nap and eat something that's calming and de-stressing. Maybe even a little bit of coffee before the nap because I know with a lot of people, if they're not at the point where the caffeine makes them all hyped and jittery, it can actually calm them down and allow them to get a good nap. And then you have the benefits of a caffeine nap, which I talked about in the last episode on sleep. And you can wake up feeling rejuvenated great because you got that good, simple nap done. So making sure to calm down is so important. So before you take your nap, make sure that you're not in that adrenalized state. Make sure that you don't have those looming thoughts about what I have to do later in the day. This is worth it. This is the most important thing right now. So focus on your nap and I swear you will have the best nap of your life. Now I promise you a bonus. So I want to give you my favorite way to have the best and most optimal nap you could have. There's a service called Brain FM, which I love. They use something called neural pattern programming, which actually gets your brain in tune to the music that's going on. A lot of people have heard of binaural beats, but the scientific research on them is iffy. Well, Brain FM actually got a grant from the government based on these neural pattern programming different tools. They have a 15 minute, a 30 minute, and a 45 minute different nap setting. And what it does is it bounces the sounds off your walls or if it's in your headphones off your eardrums. And that allows you to calm down. It brings you into the nap state. It lets you fall asleep. And then it actually wakes you back up with the same sounds bringing you in and out of the nap without that strong jolty feeling, without that adrenalized, oh my God, I gotta get up, or the alarm clock, which normally triggers you every single day. So that's my favorite way to make sure that I can dive into a nap easily. If this video helped you in any way and you took the perfect nap, make sure to comment below, give this video a like, and make sure to subscribe so I can make more content like this in the future. I wanna thank you for watching again, and I'm actually gonna go nap right now, so I'll see you soon.